Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a conversation about all things humans in tech. My name is Julia. I lead developer relations over at InfoBip, which is a cloud communications platform. We do all things communications. Also, boot outside, come see me later if you'd like to. But more importantly, I am joined by two amazing panelists today. First of all, Daria. Um, and over there, we also have Thomas. Uh, folks, would you like to say a couple of words about yourselves? Okay, let's start <laughs> talking about myself. Uh, I work in Godel Technologies Europe company. It's a software company. And at this company, I have a role as a division manager. Uh, and also, mm, I'm uh, leading uh, such a function, talent management. So uh, maybe I can describe it more. <laughs> because That is actually a very exciting combination. Um, I would like to know how that works inside the company. What does that entail? Uh, you know, talent, talent management is more about one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship. Yeah, so you close work uh, with a uh, employee and uh, make sure that everything works fine. Answer the question, guide within company, uh, also helping to grow and such things. So it's mm, in different company name differently. Yeah, but you just uh, the close uh, person for the employee. Yeah, and uh, if we're speaking about. Uh, division manager it's more about like business stuff I mean um, I'm responsible for some person who works in my division yeah and make sure that they have um, projects that they have some plans uh, make sure that talent management uh, managers work with them closely and all this stuff I hope <laughs> it doesn't make sense for you <laughs> and for it you does also. thank yeah. you for sharing that that's that's a very comprehensive way of growing people at the workplace so um thank you how about you thomas yeah hello everyone uh so i am currently a leadership consultant and a technology business advisor what i do daily uh, is actually if i would have to uh, just say my my current career in three words it will be humans in tech because i am focusing on that human side of the business I hands-on run workshops, learning and development programs, learning experiences, seminars, and, and uh, all these kind of jazz. And my majority of my clients are either technology companies, or startups, or like IT departments in big global organizations such as banks, let's say. And my main focus is on management and leadership. Uh, I include some things about performance, so it's also applicable for like team members. But uh, I think that my main zone and my main uh, focus is on team leads, especially. So people who are leading teams, either to be like developers, engineers, uh, business analysts, optimization, or other experts. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm truly excited about that. So this is what I do. Thank you for sharing that. Um, in your bio, you share that what you do for a living is managing the biggest risk for a business, which is the human factor. Why is that your standpoint? Why is the human factor the biggest risk? Yeah, actually, it is. Uh, I, 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 I don't actually remember where exactly I, I read that, but I really like the saying that the least reliable component of any system is human behavior, meaning that we can have a perfect change management plan, we can have a perfect definition of done, we can have a perfect project management strategy, but when it comes to human factor, we as a humans can get distracted, demotivated, we can burn out, we can be too excited and then damage uh, ourselves or our teams uh, and you know break the necks because we are just moving too fast. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm looking from that angle on how we can navigate this risk because even though that human factor is the biggest risk, but it's also the biggest opportunity for the organization. So we can have like very average systems or habits, but if we have like a really high performers who are motivated, who are eager to learn, who are eager to move, and, uh, and, and they are able to make a bold decisions and bold moves, I think this could also be a great opportunity for organization. So this is more like a provocative standpoint uh, to get the conversation going, but, uh, but yeah. Absolutely, I get it. There is a 
risk reward balance in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if I'm getting it correctly, you're usually coming in as an external consultant yeah. uh, and then helping um, companies develop the human resources um, and people. And Daria, you on the other hand are helping from an internal standpoint uh, grow the internal talent. I would be curious to see how both of you approach like in your definition managing the risk or where do you even start with making sure that people are highly functioning at the workplace, they are happy, they are motivated um, and they work well as a team. Like where do you start? What's the first thing you look at when presented with a team? Let's start and yeah. proceed. Uh, so I think that um, that I mentioned what talent manager do. It's especially a such thing that uh, this person can make sure that uh, employee mm. has everything that uh, they need. Yeah. So um, is there any question issues and uh, help it? help person with it yeah maybe solve it on the fly yeah don't don't wait something to happen yeah don't wait to fire <laughs> um, so i think that uh, in my opinion it's just close connection to to the person yeah um, so th this is the first that came into my mind maybe you can proceed yeah so uh uh, in my case, I start from two points. It is point A and point B. For those who were in my session uh, in the morning, uh, know that. But the point A is basically where the team is currently at. So what are their challenges, their problems? What are their unique context? What is their unique position? You know, either we are speaking about like small team, big team, distributed team, local team, all these kind of jam. And then what they are actually trying to achieve. So what is their point B and uh, what is the main goal? Because even though that we can all have very similar goals, so for example, we want to have like a healthy, productive team, happy people, uh, but the way how we are going to that and the way how, how we are progressing actually really depends on the starting position. And uh, we can have like uh, so many different people and their all point Bs will be different. So the way how I approach that will be also uh, not so similar to each other, right? Of course, there are some tools that works almost every time, but, uh, but still, uh, I try to avoid uh, being trapped in this kind of premature optimization. Then uh, I'm trying to you know, optimize things before exactly knowing what's happening. So this is where I start from, and this is actually where I, I ask my clients to start from as well. You know, and sometimes it's about challenging the client because they come to me and say that, okay, Thomas, we need a, like a leadership training. What do you got? A lot, <laughs> but what you actually need, right? You know, what you're actually trying to solve, what, what, what we're looking at. Yeah, I, ju I just want to agree with you that uh, the most tricky thing in uh, managing talent managers, yeah, that you cannot provide just uh, predefined scenarios. Yeah, okay, you can provide some usual steps that you need to do. You need to ask, uh, for example, at least specific questions uh, or something like that, but you cannot provide like step-by-step um, -step guidance for every situation because anyway, you need to uh, somehow combine that, um, for example, the current situation in the company, on the market, etc. Some specific process uh, specific for the company, and also take into account the person and their needs and their specific situations. And uh, and magic is here, <laughs> you know. Somehow you you try to find um, uh, the solution for this specific situation, and yeah, it's. Uh, it can go very wrong if you just uh, go with predefined solution for every person, every situation. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I would also want to add because we have we have to draw the distinction between technical problems and adaptive ones. So the technical problem where 
it is pretty clear what to do. We can have like an instruction. Okay, I need to merge the pull request. Okay, I need to set up the server, right? I need to connect the API, whatever. I know that there is instruction of how to, I should behave in a certain scenario, but then we have adaptive problems and it's related with humans, which are messy and uncertain and tricky and chaotic. So we cannot have the instruction. And one of the great examples is, for example, feedback. We all can, you know, if, I, if we will get you like 10 minutes to present feedback topic, all of you will nail it, I guarantee it, because it's easy to find the instruction of feedback, but it's not what makes the feedback difficult. It's about the emotions. It's about, you know, uh, speaking in a way that will not damage the relationship, right? It's, it's finding the right words and it's finding the right, uh, that personal connection and the personal relationship, as, as, as you mentioned. So these kind of difficult topics and difficult, you know, um, types of problems that we're looking at. Thank you. I like how from both of the angles, we kind of reach the point that it does require individual approach, like deep observation and empathy for the individual to understand the situation um, and act accordingly. And I think that's a very good point to keep in mind whenever dealing with people. Um, I thought maybe we could start off the conversation uh, on the well-being side um, of humans in tech and being at work, um, especially after the past couple of years um, and being a bit disrupted. So when the pandemic hit, quite a lot of us were isolated at home, started working from home, maybe some of us never before. Um, I'm curious, what's your experience uh, with how the way of work changed abruptly and how that affected uh, people in workplaces? I think it affected a lot, yeah. And uh, I think that um, the, two, the two years um, were really focused on mental health and uh, there were a lot of mentioning here everywhere because um, every person faced with different uh, issues, problems, whatever. Someone mm, cannot find the boundary between home and work. Someone just, you know, don't want to come back to the office after this <laughs> experience. So there are a lot of different situations. But anyway, it's right now, um, I think a lot of companies trying to find the perfect solution for this and you know um, for example our company goes with hybrid mode yeah because it just sometimes you use it off for example once a week yeah and um, some people uh, were struggling without communication. Some struggle. Uh, some people just um, don't want to come back to the office, as I said. Yeah, and uh, we just, um, you know, organize some events or something like, um, you know, you have <laughs> purpose to to um, come together to discuss something to. I don't know, play board games or whatever, or just um, go outside. And uh, this is like, you, you can use this opportunity to come back to community and <laughs> to the persons. Yeah. I think what you mentioned is um, quite a recurring problem. I, from a, well, problem if you look at it that way, that I come across that, um, well, people got used to working from home. Some of them don't want to come back to the offices. Some others can't wait to come back to the office. Um, and I was wondering if any of you have any advice on dealing with this situation. Maybe what's your take? What is, like, okay, we already nailed it down that uh, it's always a personal approach and you have to look at the individual situation. But if you would need to generalize a little bit, like what do you think is a better way for teams to work? Um, and how would you manage the conflict of some people trying to go back to the office, some definitely not willing to go back? 
and how do you make that team um, a high performing team and still maintain that teamwork, that collaboration, um, and the feeling of being a cohesive team? So maybe you <laughs> sure. Uh, actually, uh, one thing that I want to share uh, is that in the last couple of years, um, uh, I worked with quite a few companies. And what I have noticed is that no one has the right answer. And everyone is trying a lot of things and failing a lot. So this is what actually uh, maybe could put more confidence and relax you a little bit. Because even though that I'm speaking with a lot of clients, almost everyone says that, you know, OK, you know, Thomas, we are doing this and that, but we are not exactly sure. You know, it's working now, but I'm not sure if it will work after the week or so. You know, what's your take on this or that? So I think that uh, even though that the situations are different, and we even have in consulting this joke that, you know, probably all the answers from all the questions is it depends, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, I think that we can, you know, put some, some, some layers out and uh, focus on just a couple of main things. I think that companies who are really progressing well in that area are the ones who are, first of all, put a lot of attention to it and actually invest their time and energy and other resources into this topic as, you know, taking care of their employees. That's one thing. And another one is being able and having systems to adapt quickly and experiment because the world is changing so fast. So we need to have a structure, a system in place in order for us to experiment. And even though that, for example, if I facilitate some kind of experimentation in the company, I, uh, after the experimentation or a day or a two, I ask two questions, you know, what went according to the plan and what we achieved, but also how well we adapted to the changing environment. And these two are critically important because even though we can have like a professional uh, examples, but we can have a personal examples as well. Last week I had a day filled with meetings and trainings and other stuff, but, my, but I also have a two little daughters and they both got sick. So I have to scale, reschedule a lot of stuff, right? And even though in the end of the day, of course, you know, I didn't do, you know, a lot of things that I planned, but how well I adapted to the situation, you know, what is the most important for me? So I felt that it was still a good day, right? Uh, because sometimes we fell in that trap of uh, replanning a lot. And then uh, if we need to adapt, and we will probably need to adapt, we are thinking like a less of ourselves, you know, that we haven't planned enough. So that, I think, also relates with this kind of hybrid work, remote work, going back to the office or not. It's, uh, it's all about, you know, really taking the priority of it and also experimenting a lot and seeing what sticks. And, of course, that what sticks actually can stick just for a while, right? And we need to re-experiment over and over again. Yeah, I absolutely agree. This is, the, I think, this is the right answer to the question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it <Yeah>. depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, also, I just want to add that it's um, like important to share um, employees uh, what is the pros and cons of each approach. You know, and uh, that it's not just you know company decided okay let's go back to the office because we just want and we can ask you to do this yeah this is because uh because of communication because what we can achieve when we just sit near to each other and have uh, a lot of opportunity to discuss things uh uh, even eventually yeah maybe during the coffee or something yeah so um and of course um when you asked people, you you heard many times. Uh, at least I, I heard many times when how it's uh, quicker to solve some problem when you just see each other and we can discuss it on the spot and uh, solve it immediately almost. Yeah. So th there, but at the same time, some um, uh, employee can you know. Uh, bought all the stuff that they need at home and <laughs> you know when you have a perfect place to work it's hard to find the reason to go outside absolutely um uh, yeah i think it's there definitely is value in having this face-to-face -face interactions and being in the office in the same room often in the that one or two hours you solve more things than in a week remotely. Uh, 
but on the other side i think that people working from home and being able to keep their jobs remotely or there was that two year period when people were hiring remotely enabled a lot of people to get jobs who wouldn't otherwise be able to um i know quite a lot of new moms or women with young children uh that wouldn't be able to work a regular nine to five especially in computer science uh but having the ability to work remotely enabled them to work around their own schedule to not have a hard work-life balance but have a work life equilibrium if you will like deciding on their own schedules and fitting their life in with their work life um so i think there is definitely that upside of working remotely and i might even say that it made tech a bit more diverse in these two years what is your take on that uh actually i think that uh, of course remote work uh, can provide you great opportunity to be flexible with your schedule especially if your work doesn't really um depend on the timing yeah that you just need to uh, do this today no matter at which, at which hour for example Mm, and I think that the main idea it's uh, as we mentioned before be be flexible in in such situations yeah because it's really mm, a way to to as I said su support uh, for example women with with a um, small children yeah and this is great opportunity uh, for the company also I think that the company that just can just realize that okay we have such opportunity we can use it or not yeah and decide to depend on the business and values and whatever yeah but of course this is a great idea and this is great opportunity to use mm, yeah this opportunity to work remotely and uh, have flexible schedule and even if we are talking about um well-being yeah if i have opportunity to plan this day you know according to my priority and i just want to i don't know uh, as we discussed this meditate in the morning yeah <laughs> and spend a couple of hours why not yeah i have such opportunity and of course for me it would be um comfortable to do it at home not at work of course but Mm, you know, uh, I think in the many companies you can just agree on such uh, flexible days or flexible schedule for some time. Yeah, I think also the access of opportunities increased a lot. And uh, what I'm looking at uh, when it comes to the future of work, I really like how you put it, having the equilibrium into the work and life. I use the word integration as well. So it is about having like work and life uh, integrated and, and, and make it as a wall. Because maybe, you know, we, before that, we have this very, very clear distinction that, okay, I'm working, I'm, you know, shutting down my laptop, I'm leaving the office, that's it, done. And of course, it, it has the dark side of the moon as well, because you cannot stop thinking about work, for example. And, uh, and of course, that increases the risk of burning out or, or, or uh, damaging your, your health in any kind of way. Uh, but yeah, I think if we can look it at at its integration, I believe that we're we're actually going to that direction even before the COVID. But COVID really accelerated that and put us in this kind of <laughs> experiment that we cannot choose participate or not. <laughs> so we we are just put there, uh, and that really accelerated everything. And I think being able to uh, work from anywhere and uh, access that ability is really what what excites me as well. You know, having the different people joining uh, from different parts of the world, from different uh, phases of their life, let's say, right? We can see the people who are changing their careers at a very like older age. Uh, we can see like a very young professionals trying this, trying that, and really finding the what what really they enjoy and what they like and what they are good at. So I think uh, the, the future is really exciting in that terms. 
Definitely. You touched on a couple of points in there and I'm trying to figure out which one to unpack first. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely reinforce that um, the past two years uh, enabled tech to become more diverse, whether that's uh, the background of people or their age or just their previous experience or lack thereof. Um, and I think we've become a more accepting um industry in that sense do you think it's possible to build truly high functioning uh teams that are 100 percent remote and if so how as in what measures would you take to ensure that these teams are still high performing um and cohesive and working well together even though maybe they've never met in their lives it's a really tricky question because from my opinion um anyway you need to have some opportunity to meet each other you know some kind of business trip uh, some kind of team building it's really great to use it uh, i mean if you can <laughs> just do it <laughs> don't hesitate to collaborate with each other and spend some time each uh, with each other yeah but of course if you don't have such opportunities no matter wh why yeah but uh from my experience at least have some sessions that where you don't speak about work yeah just something unrelated you can define this through, not speak about work at all, yeah, and try to tell something about yourself, yeah, get to know each other better. So, yeah, uh, um, I think that uh, there are some teams that can can be can have great performance, yeah. But anyway, I'm. <laughs> you know, I vote for for the collaboration and meeting each other face to face. I get that. Um, I'll share a bit of personal experience. I've been working remotely for roughly five or six years now, uh, and that's two jobs. In the meantime, both of them I started remotely. Um, the first one on fully remote teams, and as you mentioned. Um, we did meet face to face, uh, and it was actually quite a hard rule of meeting face to face twice a year. Uh, we did planning and retro sessions uh, twice a year, face to face, but then also try to uh, build into those days a bit of um, team building activities, something that wasn't work related. And something in my current role that I've done is, I know it's a bit, <laughs> not that much, but. <laughs> I try to schedule a social hour, so it's literally a let's get on a call, get a coffee, beer, soda, whatever, drink of your preference, and we can talk about anything as long as it doesn't have to do with work. Uh, but I feel like these are just a couple of small things that still help towards the personal connection. I'm interested in from how the work works like how the let's say billable hours uh and the billable work um goes in teams how do you feel that we can improve on that in remote teams so one of my takes would be documenting everything <laughs> okay maybe there is a balance in there, but um, I feel like coming from a everybody goes to the office situation where not a lot of things are documented, but everything is shared real time. Um, and then taking that to a bit more of an async communication and having a paper trail of what is happening and how things work is one way to improve remote teams. Um, I'm curious, where would you start making these improvements um, regarding to work? 
I think just because you uh, asked one very interesting question regarding the remote teams and is it possible to build a high performing team fully remotely? So yes, it's possible. As it possible to climb Mount Everest, right? Possible. But it is also important to understand that it's much harder than building a team all in person. Uh, I have a couple of clients that are working in the blockchain and Web3, and uh, some companies are so remotely and like distributed, they haven't even know their exact names, or they haven't seen each other's face. So they're like avatars and code names, but they're still working very, very high performing, and they are achieving amazing results. And actually, the, the last year, we all uh, flew into Turkey to meet in person for the very first time, so they were pretty excited seeing each other like from monkey avatars and seeing the real person then, <laughs> right? But uh, but it's also, it's possible, but it's hard, right? It needs a lot of conscious, uh, conscious behavior uh, to achieve that. But in the majority of the cases, and especially if we are speaking about more tactical approach and what helps in this kind of, you know, managing billable hours or uh, making the efficiency efficiently better, I think the single source of truth helps a lot so documenting everything but also documenting the decisions and you know having one kind of uh source as, as it be like a wiki or some kind of jira documentation where everything is uh like rules and principles what's exactly working why we are doing that you know what kind of decision decisions they were so we can have that paper trace as well but it's also the one that uh, we are all agreeing that is the single source of truth so it's easy to rely on, it's easy to find information. And of course, it takes more time uh, and it takes more conscious effort to do that. But, uh, but also it is, well, it is possible, right? So actually, when we are speaking especially about the human factor or like team dynamics remotely, we're actually doing the same as we would do in person, but just on steroids. So we're doing more of that, right? We are spending more time, we are spending more energy, we are, we, you know, for example, those social hour, right? Uh, in office that happens naturally because we go for a lunch, we go for a walk, you know, we, we, we grab a coffee together. But, uh, but now you need to do some kind of conscious effort and actually to plan it and put it in the calendar, you know, and, and even sometimes ping the individual team members that, okay, will you join or not, you know, today. Yeah. And also, I just want to add that, um, you know, uh, it also can be like a part of the process that you have in the team. I mean, like uh, specific calls to, to discuss the ticket, the functionality, and just, uh, as you said, on steroids, yeah. double check it twice, four times. Yeah, and, uh, you know, write, uh, write summary and uh, everything to be sure that you understand it correctly. Yeah, so double check it as much as you, you can and be sure that we are on the same page. And also, if we are talking about more, more technical stuff, it can be like pair programming or something like that and just close collaboration between people who uh, implement it. And then you can, uh, you know, through this chain, yeah, uh, move all this information from developers to testers and so on, just to be sure that everyone in the team on the same page and double check it again. <laughs> so a whole lot of communication and collaboration. I think I already have a feeling about it, but um, based on those answers, but I, I would also like to ask, what is your preferred way of working? <laughs> it's hard. I like to have uh, flexible days, yeah, where I can work from home. And also, I really like to see a person who I work with, yeah, and have opportunity to meet you, meet each other, yeah. So it's it's hybrid mode for me. Hybrid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's same same with me. Uh, since well, my my daily job is working with groups and with teams and with leaders. So of course, if we are located somewhere near each other, the in person works the best. But since um, a huge part of my clients are all over the place, so remote becomes just by default, you know, because it's much easier than fly everyone to, to some one location. So do you do most of your work remotely then? I would say like half and half, yeah. Well, at uh, Way of Work, we also have a question that sort of ties in. 
Do you think that four-day working weeks will be adopted more in the IT industry as some companies start to use that to attract more employees? Short answer would be yes. <laughs> yeah, but I, I actually uh, know a couple of companies who are uh, far away from IT industry and they are adopting this, like a service businesses. Uh, and, and they have their own ex like experimentation rules of how they are doing that. But uh, as a way of attracting employees, I think yes. Also, some companies do like a shorter work day. So instead of like eight hours, they do like six hours and, and like similar. Uh, but yeah, but uh, everyone who, uh, uh, you know, have some experience under the belt knows that uh, it probably won't be a game changer. Because if you want to build something significant, you need that you will, you, well, you understand that you will need time and energy to put into it. Yeah, so I think that the main things in the question that to attract more employees. So it's important what is the reason to do this, to make people happier and to make their life uh, more just better, yeah, in any ways, or just attract employees. So do you feel like um, the main pro from a four-day working week would be to keep the employees happy? Or uh, do you feel like there would be also a benefit for the business? I just thought that... Um you know, you can organize such four working days that you yeah. <laughs> would die after these four days. Because, for example, for me, it's better to um, pl plan my work, yeah, and won't do uh, everything in, in one day, yeah. But so that's just what I mean here, because for some person, it's better to maybe sh shorter working hours maybe something like that so as we said before adapt it to to your situation not just uh say that for working days it, uh, it will solve everything <laughs> we have to actually understand that you know working days or working hours are based on old industrial thinking and uh, i think the einstein was the one who said that we cannot you know, solve different problems with the same level of thinking. So I think that is the example of using the old thinking to approach the new situations. And I believe that the the work and life balance and that kind of integration actually comes into place. Because for example, for me, I have days where I work 14 hours, I have days where I work four hours, you know, because depending on so many different factors. And, uh, and, and, and you know, that's the same with the, with the teams, right? You can find your pace uh, and and what is truly matters is the final result, and you know how do you, you how you can maintain the momentum in the team, so people won't burn out, but they also will be engaged enough. I absolutely agree with that. Um, as a fun fact, when I joined uh, my current company, I had it taken, I had working hours taken out of the contract um, mm. because I don't necessarily believe in working hours or hours for how long you have butts in seats but in the work being done um so i definitely like that um work life integration direction rather than trying to restrain uh the time frame um and we have another question which actually ties back to the beginning of the conversation so how would you suggest to minimize this human risk? How to ensure that, for example, the most important person in a project won't quit before the project ends? Love it. I have a contingency plan. Do you know Batman? Batman has a contingency plan for all the Justice League's members. So what if any one of the Justice League members were turned out and you know betrayed the Justice League? So he has the plan, right? So think in terms like Batman, right? Think about each team member or what happens if any of your team member get hits by bus. So it's uh, like an old, old great exercise. Yeah, yeah great exercise, yeah. Uh, that, that's the easy answer. Uh, but I understand that sometimes we can have the colleagues who are super unique mm -hmm. and they are like a mission critical for the project. Then I would say that leadership and management is the way to go because uh, one, uh, uh, like a recent research showed that on the person's performance and the mental health, uh, the first 
person who comes is their life partner, so their spouse, but the second one is their manager. So they're like a huge impact on how the person feels, how they're behaving, how they are seeing their work. So I believe that focus on that person and actually understanding them individual building and building that individual relationship will will help to mitigate some of the risk. And saying by building the relationship, it doesn't necessarily mean only by understanding what's their favorite basketball team or what you know what kind of activities they were you you doing as a teenage years, but uh, but it's also about like a professional uh, curiosity about about spending time together, uh, because I sometimes you know. For my developers, developers as a people, they don't like a lot to be super open in like a very first few years of the relationship. <laughs> so, so for me, it really helped just to build that professional curiosity and you know go from that angle. But uh, but I know that situation because I I, I was in, in the same position a lot of times. Thank you. Would you like to add anything to that? Oh, I think that we run out of the, our time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure uh, to have the conversation with you all. And thank you for the audience for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>